want to make too many assumptions, would we? Um, <laughs> that's that's the that's the trap of sales. You don't want to make any assumptions. I'm Will. I work for Salesfeed. I make content. I used to work for Proposify, so this is a trip down memory lane for me right now. Amazing, amazing, so good. Um, that, the audio was a little bit high on that, but you know what? I'm learning. I'm learning as we go along. But hopefully, everyone heard Will. That um, so we're going to start in five seconds. Everyone, thanks for joining us. Wait for a few people to to join in. If you're here, tell us, say us, say hi. So this is so good. Good afternoon for those who are joining us Eastern Standard Time. Good morning if you're Pacific, and good evening if you're joining us from other parts of the world. Um, so what is the closing show live? Some people may be, you know, joining us for the first time. So we, it's a weekly live show. So every week we're going to be we are going to be um, interviewing um, people of Proposify sales stars in the trenches and revenue leaders and superstars like Will Aiken <laughs> every week. So we discuss the challenges we're facing, the nobious lessons we've learned through things that we've gone through. And all of this is really for you. So you can crush your close rates, win more deals and, and close the close the year off strong. Hi, hi, Dipti. Thanks for joining us today. Um, so today we're going to be talking to Will. Um, we're going to be talking about how to own your own personal branding. So selling yourself to close more deals. And, you know, it sounds so easy <laughs> and it sounds like, yeah, it's like a no brainer, but it's easier. It's harder to do than, than it is to say. So um, I, I, I'd love to know from the audience uh, or those who are joining us today, like, how do you rate your own personal branding? Um, is it's, If it's not 10 out of 10, Will Aiken's going to share all the secrets today on how he crossed 30,000 followers on LinkedIn in a really short period of time, which is insane. Like I've been watching your growth the last year and it's been just like, it's been so big and it's, it's something that I think I certainly want to learn more about. Um, and we're going to also to talk about how to bring your greatest yourself to, to um, every, really, really everything you do from, from a sales perspective and really how being yourself is, is the greatest super power and selling. So without further ado, here's Will Aiken. I don't really think you, know, again, need an introduction. Um, if you haven't followed Will Aiken, he's, or if you don't know Will, he's a content creator uh, for sales speed currently. He is all, he's on TikTok. He's on LinkedIn. Go follow him right now. Hi from Romania. Amazing. Hey, Lorena. Yeah, we got a late night joining us. <laughs> well, it's not too late. It's about what, uh, Romania's probably six or seven at night. A lot of if you have a vino, cheers. Cheers, Lorena. Outside of working hours, you get extra points. <laughs> I love it. Um, so Will specializes in uh, sales processes, discovery, social selling, and video creation. Welcome, Will. It's so great to have you here. We're, we're so happy to be talking about this, this topic. I'm buzzed to be here. Thanks for, so much for inviting me on, Nadia. Yeah, no, thanks again for, for being here. We're also giving away some stuff today. So yeah. Will is, a bit, is super gracious and very much um you you are but we're grateful that you're going to be giving stuff away do you want to show what you're you're giving away we're, we're doing some t-shirts from yeah i'm from gonna give away uh just confirmed a couple of these t-shirts it's on the roadmap if you sell software uh you know exactly what this means it's uh it's something that you tell the customer when they ask for something that, that you don't yet have uh well you're not meant to actually but it's uh, a bit of a meme uh if you don't sell software then you can still, it's a still, it's a nice, good cotton count, good thread count, still a comfy t-shirt that you can wear to bed. Um, but it's on the roadmap t-shirts. Got a couple of them to give away today. So good. Uh, cotton, the high quality cotton is so important in Very any cool. t-shirt. Any right? swag. That's, that's the, one of the key elements. When someone gives me a, a low low thread count swag, I, try, I throw it back to them. I say, no, thank you. I would not be okay. wearing that branded t-shirt. Um, love it. So how do you win the t-shirt? All you have to do is comments, uh, in the, in the LinkedIn comment section and what three lucky winners will win it, um, later today. So let's get to it. Um, we are four minutes in, so, um, let's start, let's start with personal branding. Like why in your, in, from your perspective is personal branding important? Well, yeah. Why is it important? Well, I think the outcomes that you can charge are, the, are probably the most important, um, it, it 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 can if you're okay let's let let's take a step back here so to me personal brand is important because it can open a lot more doors for you in several different walks of life both selling so you can reach more customers but also networking opportunities maybe one day even starting your own business or a side gig as a result of building a following elsewhere so those are i think the, the main the main outcomes that you'd want from a personal brand and probably why it's important 
And I've seen it too. Like I, I don't have as many followers, nearly as many followers <laughs> as you do on LinkedIn or TikTok. Um, but I think that once you get your branding out there and once people know you and you're recognizable and people see you and love what you're doing, it's just so much easier to have conversations. So whether that's a professional conversation or you're at a conference or you're, you know, meeting somebody at a, in, in a meeting for the first time, there's already this, this sense of, I know you already. And this yeah. is, and, the, and there's just an excitement and an ease of, yeah. of getting of connecting with that person. So um, love that perspective. So what did you realize um, you needed to build your own brand? And when did that start for you? Tell us what, tell us a little bit about that journey. Yeah. So I don't think I, I realized it was a total accident really. Um, but w when I was working at Proposify, this is only, you know, a year and a half at this point, um, the team encouraged us to post online, you know, LinkedIn, we're selling to sales leaders. That's where a lot of them live. So a lot of the team were just posting online, but nothing was ever really hitting. Um, nothing to a crazy extent. Um, but when I started doing the videos, that's really when it started to, to, to see an uptick in the, in the engagement, in the results. And the reason I started doing that was really just as a hobby. I was just boring. I, I, I was living in a new city. I moved from Prince Edward Island in Canada to Halifax. Yeah. I didn't know enough people. Um, so after when work finished, I thought, what can I do? And I started making videos. And because I was enjoying it, I was just making them and not really caring what the results were at the end of it. So I was posting those on TikTok. And then one day I, I posted one of the TikTok videos on LinkedIn. And from there, really worked good reception. I realized, oh, hang on, I'm onto something here. So maybe that was the moment I realized. And at that point, I just kept doing it, kept doing it, and uh, kept doing it. And now we're here uh, with uh, a lot of followers. But yeah, so that, that, was, that was the journey, really. I think the realization was when I, I realized there wasn't that many people doing specifically the type of content that I wanted to make, which is video, uh, humor, um, and, and the things that I've niched down on. So good. Um, you touched on a couple of things. One is around video. So you had noticed that there was a big difference between just regular posting and video. Like what, can you share like a little bit about what that difference looked like yeah. and, and how, and how long did it take for you to see the difference in engagement? Yeah. Well, for me, I think it wouldn't be the case for everyone. So there's a lot more people who write on LinkedIn than make video on LinkedIn, but I'm a horrible writer. Like, <laughs> Can't spell, barely string a sentence together. You see my sales emails that I used to send, they would make me cringe if I opened them today. Um, <laughs> but but I'd find it quite easy to show up on video. Yeah, it just, it's just, you know, it, it's kind of almost like um, a performance in a way. And a lot of people struggle to do that or struggle to, it would take a lot of time to get comfortable with that. So I, I kind of was able to just jump straight into that. Not to say that my first videos weren't awful. When I look back at them now, I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I posted that. Um, now I would have done this, this, and this better, but that's that's part of the growth process. Um, so so video was a good way to stand out, more so portrait, more style, that TikTok short form content that really just gets the point. Um, back then, on most of the content, the video content on LinkedIn, uh, TikTok hadn't really caught on yet, so it was all kind of, you know, landscape, podcast cut downs and webinars and whatnot. Love it. And then you also touched on something around um, video being your personal way of just being able to engage with with an audience. So which goes back to being being yourself. Right. So it's about being yourself, doing what works. So personally, I I, I love writing. So I, I I'm an OK writer, <laughs> but I have started dappling in that a little bit. Just to express, you know, point of view, whatever. Um, not into video yet as much. We'll, we'll maybe do some more, more of now that. Now counts. We're on video right now. Don't forget that, all right? Yeah. Oh, right. That's right. Check. <laughs> um, and then, but back to like the video working for you and humor. So um, how much does humor play into how how people have engaged with you and, and how you build your, your personal brand? Mm. So I've been quite intentional to make sure it's not the only thing I do. Uh, the main reason being that I just don't want to be, you know, the class clown, right? But humor is definitely a great driver of engagement. If you can think of these relatable things, you suddenly realize that almost, a, especially when you're building a uh, content for an audience that you know quite well. I've been in sales for some time. I know the pains, the struggles that we actually probably are all facing day in and day out. This this week is end of quarter, right? There's probably a few things that a lot of people are feeling, like trying to get those deals in the next three days, stressing with their manager breathing down the neck. Well, that's something that's going to be relatable for a great large group of people. So to me, it was just about thinking about the, what what would relate with people like me and then making making light of the, the situation so we can all kind of laugh to ourselves. 
it's in a way because I'm making content about salespeople and I consider I still consider myself a salesperson, even though I create content full time. Uh, it's almost self depreciation, which mm -hmm. uh, if you spend any time around anyone who's British or Australian, <laughs> we love to make fun of ourselves and our friends. So, well, that's obviously that's connected because um, I think for, you, know, you hit on another point. There wasn't a lot of people on LinkedIn doing videos. I think that was also an advantage. Like the earlier you get in, um, I think that that helps with building your personal brand. Um, also the humor aspect, which really worked with you. Um, and there wasn't really, in my opinion, and, and for those who are listening, feel free to comment and disagree with me, but I don't really think anyone was owning it from a B2B perspective. Like I don't, I don't, I didn't find anyone. There were a few brands that I saw that were mm. creating and outputting video and in a kind of authentic, raw, authentic way, but no one was doing it in high velocity and consistency. So I just thought that that was another thing that, that I, 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 I think worked uh, yeah. in that everything is on the roadmap. <laughs> There's a LinkedIn user. Thank you. I'm going to leave um, your name if you, uh, if, if you want to get the t-shirt. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> make sure you comment your name as well with the LinkedIn user. Um, so, yeah, please put the LinkedIn username because I can't, we can't send you anything. That's a good point. Um, okay. So I, I publish, I don't really publish a lot. I wouldn't call myself a content creator. <laughs> Yeah. I'm, I'm talking about self-depreciation. Um, so I, but I, I find it like, even when I post every week, it's, it's hard. Like, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's because I don't know. I've, I'm a mom. I, I just find like even once a week is, is a lot for me. So how do you stay motivated? How, how do you become consistent? Uh, because we know consistency is key. So mm. how do you keep motivated to do that? Mm. Yeah. Consistency is definitely key. Um, how do I stay motivated to do it? Well, I still enjoy the heck out of it. And for me, it's a bit of an outlet. A lot of people, you know, journal every single day. For me, making videos is kind of a way of doing that. If I don't do it, then I kind of feel guilty almost sometimes. And it is important to remember that since I, uh, my, my before I work, I now work at SalesWeed as a full-time content creator. So it is actually my full-time job is right. to create content. So that does give me a lot more freedom and just keeps me in the creative mindset and the creator mindset almost all the time. So I'm always there. Everything I see, I'm like, how can I make that a sales thing? Oh, how does, how, I wonder if that could be a, a video or a post or an idea or a YouTube video or a TikTok. So that is one big part of it. I also consume tons of content, mm -hmm. um, both, you know, after work and as part of my job as well. I read a lot of sales tips. I read a lot of sales books. Um, I watch a lot of YouTube videos with my family in my spare time. That's like our main subscription service. We love YouTube videos and the way that those are made are really engaging. So I'm just constantly absorbing. And what that means is I can kind of fill my cup enough to then uh, let everyone else drink from it and make my own content. I, that analogy was a bit weird, but yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, I'm just- I got, I'm, no, I got you, I got you. I totally I'm always on content mode. That. That's the answer to that. Um, sometimes too much. You mentioned you have kids. I have kids as well. Sometimes yeah. I, uh, you know, I'm like, oh, honey, can I, I need to film this right now. Do you mind just helping me out? And she's like, oh, all right, come on then. So my, my wife and uh, my toddler uh, are probably probably could do with less videos in the house. Yeah, no, totally. It's it's definitely something that I need to schedule in. So so you get inspired through you know just being a salesperson, things that you've seen, um, tr understanding the sales kind of persona, being a salesperson um, as well. So how do you like in terms of like content generation? Like, do you keep everything? like in a, I don't know, like in an app, like how do you organize what you're going to do next? Is it just like, I'm just going to do this right now uh, as I, because I just had this thought or do you set time in the morning, in the afternoon? Like how yeah. does it work? Yeah. So the, I, I'm, I'm friends with quite a few creators on both TikTok and people who write posts on LinkedIn. Uh, this is something that some people are really good at. Some people are really bad at. I'm more flat. I'm more at planning. And I find when I plan stuff or I make stuff or I batch a bunch of content all at once, it loses its little little magic, little, you know? So I, I do more than I should uh, ad hoc stuff. Now, obviously some stuff takes longer to create. So for example, yesterday we put up a review on YouTube. We obviously had to figure out when I need to start filming that, the editing schedule for that to get that out, um, scripting time and those things. But for the most part, what you see come from me and my team on LinkedIn is probably being decided on that morning. Um, mm. And we do have a cult calendar that we're meant to stick to. I'm just really bad at updating it. So, um, yeah, it's all a bit chaotic. Yeah, all a bit chaotic. Yeah, exactly. That's it, right? We have this calendar. It's beautiful. It's color coded, and sometimes we use it um, for a week. So how do you, 
So back to like the, the, the topic of like, the, so we had talked about what do we want to talk about? And, and you had mentioned like, you know, it's really about selling yourself. So it's, it's yeah. not about being this persona. And I'm guilty of this as well. When I first started my career, it's like, I need to be a certain way. Yeah. I need to be professional. I need to be like robo Nadia. Yeah. Um, and, but like, that's like what actually is not successful. Whereas right. um, when I said, you know what, screw that. I'm not going to be doing the robo natty anymore i'm just going to be myself um and that's you know perfectly flawed <laughs> self in many ways um but how do you like break through and what and again why is it so important to building your brand so maybe to rewind a little bit on the, the whole sell yourself thing right so i i the, yeah. the, the, the thing when you hit me up for this and i was like oh, i want to be definitely on this when i when i talk about selling myself it's more about just not selling out um mm -hmm. sometimes when you start in sales and you start creating content. It happens in almost every profession. You, you, you know, you know, you work in marketing, and you're, you're telling yourself, "We almost feel like we have to be this smart business-like person." When in reality, that doesn't help us in any way, and it actually kind of annoys our clients when we, when we do that to prospects as well, trying to be the smartest person in the room all the time. You actually, you're probably not, um, and you quit that and just lean in all the way, being on what makes you unique. So, as I mentioned before, I read. A lot of sales books i've done almost 30 this year i set a goal i'm behind on it right now but almost every single book starts with this is the way to sell mm. this is the one way you should do things this is the best way i'm the number one and then when you start a new sales job sometimes and early in your career you get in and your, your manager says this is our process this is how i want you to do things but when you have a little bit of experience and i don't want, i don't recommend doing this straight away but once you've been doing it for a little while, you start to realize that the best way to sell is selling the best way for you without selling out to anyone else. And what that often comes down to is one, figure out who you are and being really be leaning into that, knowing which parts to obviously not go too deep on because I'd be chaotic if I went all the way out, right? Yeah. Um, but like showing up as yourself and knowing what how you work best as a salesperson because what you don't want to be is the same as every other salesperson who's been told to sell that way. Because yeah. if we all did sales the exact same way, it would suck for us. No one would be winning and all the clients would be annoyed as well, even if it was amazing. Because if it, it's the, it's being different in sales and as a salesperson, the way you sell that actually wins you the sales. Mm -hmm. So selling yourself to me is just about, about knowing what makes you you, finding a style that works for you and making sure that you you stick to that before anything else. And I think it takes a little bit of time and a little bit of experience, but that's what I think about and the same exact thing happens with content as well. So when I go on LinkedIn and I start writing a post out and it starts to sound like it could be written by a corporate page, I'm like, whoa, yes. why? No one wants to read this. No one wants to talk to the corporate overlord who who, sound, who has the um, the classic uh, stock music video behind them as they speak, right? They want, to, <laughs> they want to hear from someone who's real or authentic. And the reason why the content works is because it's your content and the reason why your sales works is because you're doing it to your style right so that's right. what i'm thinking about when it comes to selling yourself you do it your way you're gonna have a lot more fun and you're probably gonna see a lot more results from it as well i love yeah so the okay, case so the, the big thing that i love that you well, the point that stands out the most is it's really not about selling yourself it's about not selling out yes <laughs> and that's a really actually awesome reframing of of so it's really about what do I stand for and what do I not stand for and it's being really clear about that so mm -hmm. and, it, and it's actually there's some marketing and branding in there as well so it's like what's my point of view what are the things I believe in mm -hmm. and what makes me stand out so those are things that I'm thinking about as a marketer all the time from a brand perspective like a, building a brand and it's really about taking those fundamental branding practices and and just building it for for yourself yeah so how do i stand out what do i believe in what, not selling out on the on those core principles yeah. and and being uniquely you which is which is going to attract what what you want are those authentic relationships including um, all those imperfections as well right we don't want we shouldn't be trying to be perfect all the time in fact right. doing people people love when they get on a call sometimes and the other person's just slightly makes people feel good about themselves when you're not totally okay yourself as well. It's, mm. Right? I don't trust anyone who comes across too smart, too perfect, right? Like, what's going on here? There's, <laughs> there's something hidden right here, you know? Like, 
So that, that's that, 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 that's what I mean as well when it comes to sales, when it comes to showing up online. Stop trying to be this genius wizard and just lean into what you're good at and what you know and the stuff that you believe in. And that's 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 really what it comes down to. Love it. Um, so you had mentioned, just so for the for the people and the audience that are joining us or watching after, so, so what are you right now? Are you an evangelist? Are you a content creator? Or are you a salesperson? Or are yeah. you all those things? Tell me a little bit about that. A little bit of all those things, but but I identify still as a salesperson, even though I'm, so, I'm, I'm, I'm in marketing technically. I work on a marketing team. <laughs> uh, but I'm the salesperson on a marketing team. I'm, I'm more of a salesperson marketer than a marketer salesperson, right? Um, and, and my job right now is just about repping both Vidyard and sales feed and creating content as a full-time role, jumping on things like this, podcasts, webinars, talking about the power of using video in a sales cycle. So that's what I do now. And that all came as a result of the content that, that was being, I was creating when I was in a full-time sales role that got noticed by my boss, Tyler. And that's, that's mm. how that led to that. Okay, I'm I was certainly surprised um, when you hit the the 30k mark on LinkedIn. Like, mm-hmm. how did you get there? Were, were you surprised? Like, I remember you did like a 28k campaign for your 28th birthday. Yeah, that was that was an <laughs> which, order, so. Which, <laughs> so walk me through that. Like, is has this all been a surprise? Like, is mm. when did you know? Like, holy shit, something's working here. Yeah. The mix of me being myself, understanding sales, the humor. Yeah. The video versus the um, regular written posts. Yeah. How did you know like all of that was starting to hit and, and starting to resonate? Viralness. <laughs> Viral- uh, both, both on TikTok and LinkedIn. So mm-hmm. so in in April, if you look back on Tyler's post, you'll see I, he had 14,000 followers and I just overtook him. He made a post about it. So since then, I've all doubled my following. And the, right. what, what most of that came from was a string of consistently like big, well-performing posts that really, really broke out of the the bubble that we find ourselves in sometimes on LinkedIn. Sometimes you just see the same names and comments in the comments mm-hmm. and likes. Um, so yeah, some some really viral content, and that that content itself was actually. I used to be quite afraid of like talking in my videos in a way. Wow. And a lot of that came from like just leaning really into it, being super. Uh, what's the word? I don't know, exuberant maybe um, mm. uh, in the video and it just, it just landed and then I was like, okay, well, well, how can I do that again but in a different way so it's not just the same thing over and over again? Um, so I had, I had a long string of those happen and the same thing happened on, on, on TikTok and that was when I was still, um, that was last year, had a video that had like 2 million views. I was like, wow, okay, let's let's deconstruct that and figure out what I, how I can do more of that. So it's just really been a case of kind of, um, testing, repeating, finding out, figuring out the elements myself, and and taking both the quantitative stuff, the engagement, the shares, the comments, but also the qualitative stuff when people write a comment saying this was awesome because okay, great, that's awesome for me because the feedback's there. Um, sometimes it can be a little bit. I'm in a basement in my house in Nova Scotia. I don't really have anyone to bounce ideas <laughs> off. So sometimes the audience is exactly how I figure out where to go next. Um, yeah. Otherwise, I just get too stuck in my own head and don't don't post the stuff um, in the basement in uh in nova scotia so side note were you okay after the hurricane it was it was everything okay there yeah we, we i'm fine i know a lot of people who who fared a lot worse than we did the house wasn't right. damaged there's a lot of branches and leaves everywhere we lost power for maybe 12 hours but some people still haven't got their power back yet and some people have houses their trees fall in the houses so we did okay um overall Unreal. Um, by the way, your background is um, much more awesome <laughs> than many backgrounds I've seen. So loving, loving it. Uh, but back to back to the um, viralness. You mentioned that there was like a couple of a few videos that really kind of broke the broke through, and you mm-hmm. kind of realize, okay, I'm on to something. So was it like a one hit wonder, or was it like a few few hit wonders that kind of were like, yeah. okay? This is this is exploding. I'm on to something. I'm gonna keep double down. I'm gonna double down here. And I just wanna say, I, I can't believe that you were fearful of like just you know being more um you mentioned exuberant in the vi- videos. So it's yeah. which is interesting because every single time I've been f- afraid of something, <laughs> it's always when like the magic happens, when you break yeah. through that, it's always like, okay, why the hell was I? fearful of that yeah. and um i'm happy i just like 
face the fear and just kind of got over it. So, so I noticed that wanted to count, call that out, but then also back to the, the one hit wonder or one hit wonders. Can you talk a little bit about was, was it any specific video would, lo- would understand yeah. what that was? Okay. Think, let me think about that. So, yeah. So yeah, it was a specific video that really, really took off that gave me a huge boost in followers. I think gave like 3000 across two days, um, which is huge. And what happened was I'd been watching some content night before. I think I was watching um, the Scratchpad podcast, Beyond Quota with Corporate Bro and, and Hu Yan there. Nice. And in the podcast, he said, should other departments um, be treated like sales? Should they, um, should they be given quotas as well? And uh, I, I, so, so I commented, oh, yeah, can you imagine that? If your Instagram post doesn't get, you know, 10,000 likes, then you're on a pip. Sorry, Samantha. <laughs> In marketing so i commented that and then it got like you know 20 likes but the video wasn't didn't their video wasn't huge as well mm-hmm. I went, oh i wonder if i could just like take that concept and apply it to all of them so i was actually really sick when i watched that really rough um had shivers and cold and my throat was dead so i went up the next day text her saying hey look i'm i'm done today but then the night before i thought of that video idea i just had to make it that day so then i just ran around my house walking to different rooms pretending that i was talking to people It'd probably look insane if you yeah, if you hadn't seen the edited version. Um, and uh, just kind of... Protect- it's always a mark between insanity and genius, right? Yeah, exactly. So uh, it was the what if other departments were treated like sales. And that's pinned on my profile as well. I had like 20,000 likes, bunch of comments, loads of shares. That gave me a boost in followers. The following week, I did a part two to that. And then uh, I think that four weeks later, I did a... Uh, I, people were complaining like, oh, well, sales has all this all these things, like a bunch of people in like marketing and development and security were like, well, sales gets paid really well and they get massive bonuses and they get to go on president's club. I was yeah. like, okay, so why don't I flip the script on this idea? Cause I don't want to, you know, I don't want it to, that idea to run dry now. So then I did what if um, other departments acted like sales? So I did the, the opposite basically. And then like did marketing, like if they, if they had president's club and uh, product uh, product team, if they were like forecasting updates and whatnot to the product. And that went that went really well as well. Um, and there's just been a few bits and bobs there. So anything really. I remember well, that uh, video, by the way. I totally remember that one. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. You can find them all on my profile. I pin them all uh, on my LinkedIn profile because uh, uh, the the big ones, and I'm really proud of those as well. I just filmed and captioned a new one today, which I might post right after this, which is a part three to the first part. I tried to. I've been the issue is now that I've done that, the pressure's on to keep the keep the jokes fresh and keep that mm-hmm. format fresh. Uh, so it took me a little, it's taken me two months to, to do this one because I really just need to, one, be in the right mood if I'm going to be in front of camera like that. Um, but two, I wanted, I wanted the jokes to be funny as well. Uh, I knew, so I just didn't keep saying the same jokes over and over again. But that really good tip there, or just, um, I love how you took us through, it's it's taking one idea and it's 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 generating other ideas from that. So it's kind of re- not, not necessarily recycling, but it's yeah. like, how can I tap into this, make it bigger, make it better. Yeah. I can't believe we're running out of time here. So um, yeah. I, I'm going to like skip all the questions that I have prepared yeah. <laughs> and I'm just going to go to, so two things, if you want to win a t-shirt engage right now, it's your last chance to win one of yeah. the uh, sales feed um, t-shirts. Believe me, they are like one of the, the highest, like I think sought out, Swag items. They're not for sale. You can't get it. They're not for sale. You can't get it. People comment on our videos. I want that t-shirt and I'm like, well, you can't have it. I'm sorry. Um, Last chance to comment and win. Um, But let's leave the audience with the last thing. So how do people get started if they're like, okay, they've rated their self or their brand, their their personal brand, like five out of 10. Uh, How do they get started? How do they get motivated? Start. Um, And to me, so start is, is the first thing. Um, to me, again, it's not about trying to be the smartest person on the on the on the entire platform that you're posting on. It's about maybe the things that you learned or found funny that happened to you. So if you take your experiences as a seller or as whatever you do, a recruiter, and let that fuel the content. Make notes of when something interesting happens or when you learn something or when something makes you laugh, and then make that use those as the content because then the content will be you it won't be you pretending to be someone so yeah just 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 start writing down interesting things that you learn and laugh at during the day and that that, that will that will fuel the content um and, and be your love it. there you go from will aiken um 
one of the, I think, hottest influencers right now from a sales perspective. Thanks so much, Will, for joining us. Thank Last you. chance to win a t-shirt, comments in the comment section. Thank and thanks for joining us. Next week, we have Morgan J. Ingram yeah. uh, joining us. Um, so jo uh, I'll join us next week if you can. That's it. Thanks, everyone. Morgan's great.